Michael J. Fox suggested it would be fun to visit the Old West, and the final installment in the Back to the Future trilogy was born. It's Back to the Future 3, the movie that gave us a mad dog and a happy ending for Dr. Emmett Brown. Here, we'll take a look at 10 things you never knew about Back to the Future 3. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. Subscribe to MovieWeb to keep up with the conversation about all of the things we love. The Paradox Script Despite the cliffhanger ending, there were originally no real plans for a Back to the Future sequel. However, once the studio became dead set on making one, director Robert Zemeckis and his co-creator Bob Gale agreed to come back to make it. Conceived as a single sequel, a script called Paradox contained elements that were eventually split into Back to the Future 2 and 3. Paradox remained the working title for the sequel shoots, and parts of that script were used in the novelizations of the two movies. Doc! I'm from the future. Marty's Bail. An even earlier version of the sequel story, predating Paradox, saw Marty traveling back to the 1960s. He's arrested because he doesn't have a draft card. Lorraine bails him out, and as a result, she no longer has the money necessary to travel to San Francisco to meet George to celebrate their anniversary. As Doc says in that version of the script, this was supposed to be the night that the McFly parents, quote, engage in biological reproductive mating behavior. Had producers stuck with this version of the sequel story, we most likely wouldn't have even visited the Old West. Doc Shirt. As most fans know, Back to the Future 2 and 3 were filmed back to back, a then relatively unprecedented move for a major movie studio. Doc Brown wears a shirt through the majority of the second movie with illustrations of trains and cowboys on horses. An awesome bit of foreshadowing for the events of Back to the Future 3. Fake Hill Valley, Real Lightning. Back to the Future 3 was allowed to film in Sonora, California rent-free under one condition. They had to agree to leave all of those cool Old West buildings there, in hopes that the sets would serve as an attraction for other Western-themed productions to come and film there. The county itself had served as the site for Gary Cooper's For Whom the Bell Tolls, Gregory Peck's The Big Country, Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven, and TV shows like The Lone Ranger, Rawhide, Gunsmoke, Bonanza, and Little House on the Prairie. But six years after the release of Back to the Future 3, the movie set sadly burned down, and a 7,000-acre fire started, like many fires, by a bolt of lightning. Whoa. The Clint Eastwood joke. Speaking of Clint Eastwood... Hello? There's a great Clint Eastwood joke at the drive-in theater. And Clint Eastwood never wore anything like this. But even better, there's a subtle visual gag involving Eastwood as well. As Marty emerges from the bathroom in his cowboy getup, two of the posters on the wall are from B-movies that featured a then-unknown Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I don't think it's nice you laughing. Michael J. Fox passed out in the noose. As detailed in the actor's autobiography, Lucky Man, Michael J. Fox went unconscious during a dangerous stunt gone wrong blacking out as the rope actually began to choke him during the scene where Mad Dog Tannen tries to lynch Marty. It's good to see you, Marty. The Clock Tower. As Marty and Doc talk to the conductor, the clock for Hill Valley's all-important clock tower can be seen getting unloaded from the train in the Hill Valley of 1885. Frisbees really were around in 1885. In another of the movie's many great visual gags, Marty throws a Frisbee's pie plate in Back to the Future 3, knocking a gun out of Mad Dog's hand. The Frisbee Pie Company was a real thing, started in 1871. College students tossing their empty pie pans around did, in fact, lead to the eventual creation of the modern Frisbee. Michael J. Fox convinced ZZ Top to perform an on-set concert. Hit-making rock trio ZZ Top cameos in Back to the Future 3, playing an old-timey version of the song Double Back, which later appeared on their Recycler album. As legend has it, Michael J. Fox asked the boys if they would play a rendition of Hey Good Lookin' while the production waited for a camera to be repaired. ZZ Top obliged, which turned into a bit of an onset party, as song after song followed. Far out. Ronald Reagan could have been the mayor. Then President Ronald Reagan so much enjoyed the joke about him in the original Back to the Future, he reportedly asked to have the projectionist rewind the scene so he could hear it again. Who's President of the United States in 1985? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan? The actor? <laughs> he even gave the movie a shout out in his 1986 State of the Union address. As they said in the film, Back to the Future, where are we going? We don't need roads. Producers offered him the role of Hill Valley's mayor in Back to the Future 3, which was released a little over a year after Reagan left office, but he declined. The two-term governor of California wasn't interested in returning to Hollywood, unlike one of his successors. Hasta la vista, baby. We hope you enjoyed this look at 10 things you never knew about Back to the Future 3. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with your friends. And subscribe to MovieWeb. 
Even if you have to go back in time to subscribe or go forward or, or come back and then because you went forward, you came back and uh, just subscribe. 